Hey folks, welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. We have a really great episode today. We're going to be talking about um, answering your social media marketing questions, which is something that a lot of you have been tweeting us, Facebook messaging us, LinkedIn messaging us, blah, blah, blah. So um, I have a really fantastic expert, um, Marty McDonald from Bad Rhino Inc. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him in a second, but he's going to be with us for the whole show answering your questions. Like I told you in our previous episode, we are taking your questions and we are answering them on air. So basically, this is like a free consultation with the experts within the industry. So what I'm going to try to let you know in advance are the people that we're going to be having on the show so that you can ask specific questions about the industry. So it could be PR. We had a really great one with Leanne last week with um, affiliate marketing. So there's lots of different things we're going to be talking about. It's not just going to be about Facebook. There's more to life than Facebook. Remember that. Um, but if you'd like to learn more about me, the show, anything, please check us out at my website, which is go sales and marketing.com. That is the website for my firm, the go agency. When you're there, there's a free e-course, there's blogs, there's articles, there's links to the social have at it. I'm not telling you where to go, go wherever you want um, and just really in, enjoy yourself and find some information that's useful for you. Um, but before we bring on our guest, I want to tell you a little bit more about um, Marty. Marty is the co-founder, like I said, and CEO of Bad Rhino Inc., which is a full service social media marketing agency that's based in Westchester, PA. So he's been in business for a while, since 2002, um, and he's consulted with small businesses and startups to help them succeed online, which is something that I really, really absolutely love. And one of the reasons that he's grown so much is to be so successful so quickly is due to their ability, his team's ability to really develop truly unique and highly customized strategies that create incredible exposure for their clients' businesses. Now, their full service approach means that they not only create these amazing strategies and plans, but they also implement them, which is really important to understand. Um, and they also manage the day-to-day, -day, including delivering messages to their customers. Um, they've also run, Bad Rhino has won the top social media agency award in 2016, 2017, and 2018. So three years running um, by the research firm Clutch. And also um, they have clients in many different sectors. So if you're listening and you're like, oh, is this gonna be right for me? Well, this is something that they cover a lot of different things, food, craft services, restaurants, golf, real estate, staffing, technology. There's tons and tons of different categories, small to large. And also Marty's the author of this best title ever of Great Beer is Not Enough, which is available on Amazon. But what I'm going to do right now is stop flapping my gums and bring on Marty so you can meet him and we can start answering some of your questions because I have a few of them lined up here. So I'm just going to let Marty in now and we're going to bring him into the conversation. Hey, Marty, how you doing? Welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. And great. How are you doing? Great to be here. Good, good, good. Um, well, um, I just told everybody all about um, Bad Rhino, but would you like to talk a little bit about your, um, just as your experience, introduce yourself to the audience? Absolutely. So first off, thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, I've uh, been doing digital marketing, what seems like since the Stone Ages, since about 2002, right? <laughs> right. So <clears throat> putting all that together and started off as like a side hustle and had a lot of uh, little things going on that turned into a, a small consultancy, which eventually became Bad Rhino in 2010. And in 2010, if you remember way back when, um, social media didn't really have like giant ad platforms. They were just kind of starting out. A lot of it yeah. was organic. And my business partner, Rich, came up with an idea saying, okay, I think there's an opportunity. And I wasn't 100% interested. My main consulting part was copywriting, email marketing, media buys, okay. ad, yeah. you know, ad stuff like that. Yeah. And <clears throat> he came up with it. And I said, well, look, Rich, I'll help you get started, but you have to come up with a cool name. Hmm. And Rich, he's super well thought out. You know, I'm thinking it's going to take him two, three weeks to come up with like a cool name because I figured he would analyze everything if he was really serious about it, pull <laughs> all this other stuff together. Well, 45 minutes later, he comes into my office, erases the whiteboard, comes up with 12 names. I can't remember for the life of me, the other 10. One was Moosehorn and the other one was obviously Bad Rhino and that stuck for the past 10 years. Yeah. And uh, we kept it for a couple of reasons. The main one is everybody asked the question, right? Yeah. So 
it's a great conversation starter. And I don't think I would say 99% of the podcast interviews from stage, from all sorts of other places that I've spoken at, then in conference calls, whether it's initial calls or going over proposals, that question comes up 99% of the time. Right. Um, we do digital marketing um, with a social media focus. You know, social media has become the internet. Internet's become social media. Mm -hmm. So we handle all those types of services. And we have clients from the small business up the street to large pharmaceutical companies and everything in between. And we're based in Westchester, PA. So there's the quick down and dirty of it. <laughs> and um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, so we're another Pennsylvania. Oh, cool. Boy. Another there Pennsylvania. I'm just, a, I'm just transplant in Florida right now, um, <laughs> where I'm, I'm totally being super bougie by wearing a sweater, uh, like a, a scarf, <laughs> because it's about like 60 degrees outside, so that's freezing here, um, yeah. um, which is so angering. But um, you're talking about, you know, starting off, um, starting off your business and kind of like you were just doing it as a side hustle, and then it turned into something real. Um, then you you partnered up, got the name, got things rocking and rolling. Um, a lot of a lot of people have been asking um, across a lot of the interviews that we've had is, you know, how do you start a business? And I mean, in in your in your own words, like I mean, I have I, for me, it was something that it was I, it was a it was a passion point, and also I saw <laughs> that I was working in lots of different agencies where I felt the creative people being mistreated and not mistreated, but looked, looked over and not listened mm -hmm. to. And I was like, wow, wouldn't it be cool if I had an agency where all the creative people were actually supported? What? And, <laughs> uh, and, um, and that's kind of what I, where, I, where I kind of drew and started the Go Agency. But like, how would you say would be the, how, how would you start a business or suggest someone to start a business? Yeah, I think it's a question I get quite often. Um, I've started multiple and have had, hands in, in different ones and yeah. advise a lot of startups. And then we work with quite a few as well. Um, I think the biggest thing is um, know thy market first, right? Oh. So you got to understand who the community is that you're selling to, mm -hmm. who is kind of your core clients or potential customers. Mm -hmm. Now it's never going to be perfect from the beginning, but you also want to rely on the data coming back. Right. So you might have to make a shift because you might have this great idea for a brand. You might have this great idea for a concept or a product, right. but you know, at certain points in time, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the most perfect thing when you launch, right? You know, mm -hmm. so you have to take what the feedback is and massage that. So that's why I tell everybody is understand that market because that service offering might be a slightly different, like, let's go with just something simple like a lawyer. And you might say, well, I'm going to do website marketing, website marketing for legal, right? Yeah. And I have a, an interesting twist on it. And you're, first time you pitch somebody and the lawyer comes across and goes, you know what, I would buy that. And I would hire you in a second if you had this. And then you go, well, I'm not going to do this or that, whatever that this or that might be. And then you go to the next one, you pitch it and the lawyer goes, I would buy that from you because I really like you. But if you had this or that in there, I'm in, but you know, we can't take that feedback. Don't just be there and be like, no, 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 we're not going to do this this way. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to tweak it because what you find is now you might have 10 or 15 lawyers and they are only looking for this or that, but they like the other stuff, but they really need that one thing. And I think that's the one big thing is just understanding the market, get the feedback. And instead of just being very stubborn about it, take that feedback and work it into your offering or product. And I, and I, I completely agree with you because I think that, uh, this goes for even like if you're talking about the beginning of a marketing strategy, um, yeah. it, it, whenever a client, uh, let's say prospective client, because I would never probably take them on as a client. If they came on and just, uh, I say, what's your, what's your number one goal? And they're just like to make money. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what's your path? What's, what's driving this project? And it's like, well, to make money. Uh, it, it, there's not much that you can do with that. Um, it's, I, I find that if you know what your market is going to be, so you know that there's a proof and concept of what you're going to be working on, and then be like you said, like be open to the feedback that's going to be there. You can even do test runs um, to yeah. see if things work. Because one of the things I told somebody and they were like, what? Um, was I said, um, they were thinking about doing this really extensive funnel where it was going to be like 10 different, 10 or 20 different steps that would go into another 30 steps. And it was like 14 different products and all this. And like, yeah, we <laughs> want to get started on this. And I was like, why don't you market a webinar today? That's going to happen in a month and see how many people you get it. 
onto mm -hmm. it. And if they're like, well, why would I do that? I haven't created the content. And I said, you can create the content pretty quickly when you actually have people that want it, right? But if you right. work all of this time, like six to nine months to create something and there's no proof in it, I mean, it's a waste of time and, and, and effort and money. And also you put, you get really let down. And I think a lot of companies that start out, they're like, man, I thought what I had was like the snowflake. It's like, well, honey, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of snow when it falls exactly. from the sky. You know what I mean? There's a lot of snow. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. but, but like talking about marketing plans, you know, why do you, I, and I, 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 I'm a firm believer in this, but what is your take on the need for having multiple channels as part of your marketing strategy? Yeah, I think, um, that's a great question. And, and you're right. Like around the idea where you're like, oh, I got this idea. And it's just like, well, 65 million other people have the same idea. It's like, how are you going to differentiate yourself? And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, that's why there's Ford, Chevrolet, Mercedes Benz, BMW, like everybody, right? Precisely, yeah. <clears throat> so I think going to your question here about having that strategy is going back to the original is know where your audience is, right? So let's just say you're going to get out and you're going to talk about this new idea, this new concept or whatever. That's exactly what you want to do. You know, create the content mm -hmm. yep. and people freak out you know, they're like, well, it's not quite ready yet. You know, I'm like, well, that's really more of the best time, kind of like your webinar analogy, right? Let's get some people on here. So, you know, you can do a multitude of things to get in there. Um, let's just use, um, just because I happen to be a client this morning, use a, um, golf, um, some a, an industry that we work in. And, you know, they have an idea and they have a concept. They're already established company, but they didn't want to put it under their same brand, right? So I said, all right, well, why don't we go back to where we started, which was rent the list. You know, there's plenty of email lists where you can get whatever it is, doctors, lawyers, right. golfers, whatever. <clears throat> we'll throw up a landing page that says, here's the product. We have a great demo video, put the video in there. You know, it's a 30 second mini commercial with, you know, some long form copy and let's put it out there right to your target market. And they're like, well, why would we do that? It's not quite ready. And I'm like, well, let's get the feedback and ask, hey, would you, you know, like mm -hmm. to learn more? Yeah. And out, out of the 10,000, 20,000, or however many people we get, we put it out there. So that's one, you know, you can do an email list, you know, you can swap email lists, you can buy them, you can trade off with things. Yep. It's not very mm -hmm. difficult to do, but then creating pieces of content. If you know your audience is, you know, a certain age group or a certain demographic and they're heavily on Instagram, well, create some pieces of quick content, you know, make sure that you have an account that looks alive and go live every day, you know, mm -hmm. for like a week and just talk, yep. but make sure you, you know, have that so you can record that. So you have your phone over here. Mm -hmm. And then you're recording with your laptop and maybe you're doing Instagram live and then Facebook live, but you're making sure you're downloading it so you can upload it to YouTube mm -hmm. and then send it out and push it out to anybody, you know, you know, share it on personal things. Now you're starting to get all that information back and you're using mm -hmm. multiple strategies, right? And that's yep. if you're just starting out, it gets more advanced as you know, you know, once you start putting things out there mm -hmm. that, you know, you can start to drive traffic to different things, drive sales ultimately. But at first, you know, when you're first starting out, you need to make sure that you're hitting a couple of different things. And it's like this avalanche of stuff like oh my gosh how am i going to do with this how am i going to do that yeah and it's true you know i mean everyone gets overwhelmed even in the agency world when you start off things when you know what you're doing mm -hmm. but if you're starting out or if you have a new idea or you're trying to change your marketing don't forget you know people some people like to read things some people like to watch things some people yep. like to listen to podcasts some people like to be on social media others want to get hit square between the eyes with a and add on, um, you know, at the bottom of their TV now, you know, you go yep. and choose Netflix or Amazon, and now there's a little ad that pops up. So there's a lot of different things. And I think that creates the overwhelm, Chris, like where you have everything that comes out mm -hmm. and people don't get started. So when I say you need to have multiple channels, you don't need to have them all at once, but you need to develop a strategy that you can start to hit that so you can get the data back and refine your marketing. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I think that it's uh, one thing that you said that I always suggest as well is um, what I, <laughs> I like, I'm, I always tell my clients that I'm cheap. So what I want to do <laughs> is I want to get one, I want to squeeze a nickel until the buffalo poops. Like I really, really want to like really get as much juice out of the berry as I possibly can. 
And they they say like, well, what do you mean? And I said, I'm gonna get that blog. I'm gonna turn it into an ebook series. I'm gonna turn it into a video series. I'm gonna put it on here. You're gonna put it over there. And I'm like, well, oh, how are we going to do all of that? And it's like, do it once and I'll show you how to do the rest. Because once you do the first one piece and you create like an evergreen piece maybe, which, which is kind of what I like to say, because you can always retitle an evergreen piece to be something mm-hmm. that's like, Hey, you want to lose weight this month? <laughs> Learn <laughs> mathematics. I don't know, but like, but you could, you know, you're figuring out kind of um, um, how to get one piece and really use it again and again. And I think that is a way for people to really open up their mind to those different strategies because they feel like everything is a different country and they don't have a passport. And it's kind of like you, you, you do have a passport. You have the access. It's just the knowledge is part of that passport that kind of connects those pieces. Especially, Absolutely. especially with now with all the different integrations that people have available to them, things are much easier than they were 20 years ago. Um, it's not that you have like there's automations now that were not available before that really help people build their business. And and I do feel like the uh, the marketing plan with multiple channels is really important. Now mm-hmm. this is okay. This is another question that we got. And I love this question. I love asking people because I love hearing what they have to say because I'm very opinionated on this. Um, what do you, th- what, what do you think is the b- best social media channel for a company? Uh, well, I go back to the beginning, you know, that's why I start. you have to understand, like, if you're going a hundred percent that you only sell something that people are going to buy in mass, like, you know, it, only people buy a thousand of them. So it's more of a B2B product, right? Yeah. You're not necessarily going to do a whole heck of a lot on Instagram. Let's just be real. However, However, I always say this, that you need kind of the marketing wheel and you need to know where your people are and that's where you're going to invest heavily, right? So you're going to start there. Your people are on LinkedIn, right? And I use this analogy at a um, lumber uh, manufacturing conference that I spoke at a couple of years ago. Okay. And actually, you know what? It was only like a year and a half ago. It feels like 10 years ago though, with everything going on. (laughs) Um, But I said to them, they're like, well, we definitely don't need Facebook or Instagram or any of these other things. Our main target's going to be here. And I don't even know if they're on social media. And I said, there was about 120 people in the room. Um, I said, okay, can everybody here, um, let's just try something here. You know, who here has children? And, you know, about half the, more than half the room raised their hands. I said, how many people here have children that play sports or are involved in school activities? And about, you know, three quarters of them still kept their hands up. I said, okay, how many of you have had to log on to Facebook because, you know, little Johnny, little Mary, whoever it was, had a softball game, a soccer game, an art event, a music event, whatever it was. Yeah. And that's where the event information was. Mm. About the same amount of hands stayed up. Yep. Great. <clears throat> I said, now all of you are in quote unquote B2B marketing and or services, correct? I'm like, well, how many of your target market is on Facebook? And they all looked around, right? Like, what is he getting at? And I said, well, I'm like, let's put an idea here. You see an ad. I see an ad for this lumber. You click on it and you're going to say, this is going to be great for our supply, but I'm not going to be able to get this tomorrow. I click on the ad to go to the website. You go in and go, oh, I got to get to Mary's recital tonight. And oh, where's the, where are we having this? What, what building in the school or whatever? Obviously pre-COVID, right? And <laughs> so then it was like, oh, now I, I log into Facebook and then I see this ad again. I go, oh yeah, tomorrow morning, I got to go do that. You know, and then I, I go in, I get, you know, my cup of coffee the next day after the recital. It was great. You know, I'm going in, I log into Facebook because there's, everybody puts all the pictures there. And I, you know, I didn't take that many because I was sitting in the back. Mm-hmm. And then I go back in there and I see that ad again. And I remember, and then I go on LinkedIn and I find the people that I need to talk to. Mm-hmm. Then I get an email because I put my information in there. So when you ask which channel it is, it's omni-channel, right? Yep. And if you put the right plans together, people are, are all over the place, but they have instant oh yeah i gotta do what well, yep all right let me get this call right and i gotta do this okay i'm going here even when they're working from home actually nowadays it's even more uh limited in time frames so their attention to detail um is there but it's quick right they're like yep i gotta do that but they don't necessarily write it down they don't make a note they might opt in like right. you said to get the ebook or get more information or have somebody contact me but if you have the right a mixture of things with retargeting and some other things, 
every channel can reach that audience. Now, mm -hmm. the caveat to that is you don't want to be heavy on one versus another if your yes, audience yeah. isn't there, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be more heavy for that lumber one on Facebook. However, the reminder is there. So people buy things differently now. Mm -hmm. So if you have the right targeting in that ad, and you have everything when people buy they research a heck of a lot more i was just on a webinar the other night um, over the holidays i was watching a recording of one and to buy a car cold online so somebody's going to buy a car and they shop okay. 900 visual touches slash views of some ad before they wow. get to one where they pick the car and perhaps make a contact wow. 900 that's amazing Right. So wow. when you think about that and to answer your question finally yeah. and bring it to a close is that you have to remember how people are looking at all this information. Mm -hmm. So you can't just rely on one versus the other channel. Mm -hmm. You need to put it all out on the table, but it's going to take a little bit of time to find the right mixture. But you can't discount one versus the other. They're weighted differently. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. we're not going to put, you know, hey, we're going to sell HVAC on TikTok right? No. I mean, we might do some fun things with your technicians if that's what they're into. And yeah. you know, you have that type of culture, right? But you're not really going to put like, Hey, buy this one here. If you have a 2000 square foot plus condo or whatever, <laughs> like that's not the place for it. Brand recognition, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to have that whole channel approach. So it's a long windy row, which is why I have a long windy answer to answer that question. But you want to make sure that you know, not only your audience, but then you know what you want to get out of it and where they are. And I think what, the first thing that I want everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice right now or looking at me speaking is he gave a long answer, not because he's trying to not give you the answer. It's the right answer. And this is one of the yeah. things as a social media marketer, sometimes you have to give answers that are not that pleasing to the client that's looking to come on. Because yeah. I had someone that came in, because one of the things I think that's been really great um, over the past few months is that events have gone virtual. Um, and the reason I say that is because um, one of the biggest things I would get would be someone calling up and saying, hey, um, um, I want a Facebook campaign. And I'm like, well, why, why the hell do you want a Facebook campaign? Who the, who the hell is this? And, and they're like, well, it's, um, it's, it's I, I'm Bob from um, S Corp. And I need, uh, my, my boss just came back from a conference and he's just really hot on Facebook. I really like not getting those calls because they just want to spend money on Facebook and they don't even care what they're going to get. They just need to actually place that order. And um, that's one of the things that's really scary about uh, that way of thinking yeah. because it's, it's a social media landscape. It's not uh, the Facebook world or it, it, it's, it, and it changes so often. And one of the things I always say is, you know, if you're dipping your finger in all the different pies, you're going to see which one that you're going to want to go with. Uh, like heavily have another slice of, but still keep active because I have people that be say, saying that they want to put, I only want a Facebook campaign. And it's like, listen, okay, well, let's, not, let's talk about this. And they're like, uh, well, I only want to do Facebook, but I don't want to do advertising. I'm like, okay, we really need to talk about something then. And uh, we really have some hard truths. I got to tell you, <laughs> it's nothing without advertising, but, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting to when people come in and say, okay, well, what, what social media is right for me? <laughs> right. I, I have to test and see. Like you know, there's no e there's no easy answer because sometimes the answer will surprise you. I mean, you'll have somebody that will just really light up on Twitter that you never thought in a million years would be a Twitter winner. Uh, it's so funny. Is um, a B two B client? <clears throat> I said, look, I'm like, can we just divert a handful of these dollars to Facebook after like six months of proving ourselves and everything else. And, and they were like, well, what else can we do? These are great. And I was like, all right. So I talked to my ad guy. He's like, honestly, he's like, they should just tap in with some very high top of funnel type campaigns on Facebook yeah, and create some more brand awareness. And I was like, okay. And I said, can we pry this away? Can we get X amount of dollars? I forget how much it was, no. <clears throat> but it wasn't like earth shattering, but it was significant amount of budget. And they're like, well, why? And we're like, well, you want to bump these numbers up and we want to do that. But at the same time, we're ignoring one of the biggest places on the planet. They're like, well, no one, no one's going to be looking at this on Facebook. And I'm like, uh, okay, if we target it correctly here, <laughs> the people that, <laughs> right. And you know, it, it goes back to that yeah. same thing where you go, oh, I want a Facebook campaign. Right. 
and, and I get those calls too. We get them here and it's hilarious because you still get them, right? And they're like, well, we haven't tried it yet. And I'm like, okay, well, there's a little bit more than having tried it yet. What else are you doing? Well, not much on digital, but we figured we would just jump into Facebook as a starting point. Yep. And I'm like, okay, hey. <laughs> but let's talk about this, you know? And, <clears throat> you know, some of the stuff that we're doing with Google AdWords and YouTube and some other things like that, like when you tie those all together, like we were talking about before, it becomes very powerful. But if you just go, hey, I want a Facebook campaign, guess what? It's not necessarily going to work just like that. And, and I think another thing too is it's the, um, it's understanding how to track the results that you're going to get. And this is going to go to the next question as well. It kind of, another, another question we get all the time is what does an agency do? And it, it's, it, it's one of the things that I've always found that's really interesting and getting them to understand the two sides of ROI and that ROI is return on investment and return on influence and the credibility that you like going back to what you were saying in terms of the impressions that need to have the 900 for the car dealership. It's, it, it's, it's, you need to be seen, you need to be visible. Right. And people will say, well, why do I need to have um, a thousand likes on my Facebook page? And I said, cause you need to look alive. You need to look like you have a pulse. <laughs> why do I have to have posts on my Facebook page? Cause you're a human. I mean, it's like, this is what we need to do as brands. Um, but I would say maybe we just want to focus on your influence and engagement on Facebook and maybe focus on sales on LinkedIn and maybe like doing some like warm up or something and then trying, you know, and then, but is that where, this is another thing that I think is really interesting. And this is where the agency question really comes home. It's kind of like they, a lot of people think that the social part of it is the whole process, like the whole sales process. So basically <laughs> what we're doing is we're like going, come here, baby. And then they take the bait. And then if the bait is shit or your conversion's terrible and I'm not handling it, that's where it ends. So it's like, well, um, well, why are we not getting more sales? I didn't design your website. I didn't design your incentives. I don't handle your website and analytics. This is what Facebook is telling me. Here you go. I mean, it's like, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of challenging, yeah. right? So. So in your words, what does an agency do? <clears throat> an agency in a couple of different words there. So the first, I'll go two parts. The first yeah. one is to help you align your brand and that sales aspect, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So in that is to make sure that where you're being seen. Now, obviously every agency is a little different. Some do just this, some do just that. Um, in our agency, being a digital marketing agency, what we're going to make sure is whatever we're tasked with, we're going to make sure that operates appropriately and right. we're not wasting your money right now. A lot of people sit here, listen to this, be like, well, I hired an agency and it was super expensive and all this, right? And, and they kind of equate like, you know, the opposite side. Mm -hmm. But a true, in my opinion, a true professional in a good agency is going to help you get that brand aligned with the sales side. And then that's where that ROI comes in. Mm -hmm. The part two of that mm -hmm. is exactly what you just said, right? You kind of stole a little bit of the thunder there is where is that breakdown? You know, I used to <clears throat> work in software, a company, and I was head of recruiting, you know, for, you know, it's while I was doing the side hustle marketing. Yeah. And the one interesting part about it when you were recruiting is you always saw sales hated marketing, marketing hated sales, right? Of course. Yeah, of course. Sales always said marketing didn't do enough. Marketing's going, yo, everything's right here other than us picking up the phone, talking to these people yeah. and closing the sale, right? So one of the things when you just said that, like, oh, here's the Facebook results that made me laugh because we had a client a couple of years ago. And I'll never forget, like, we're looking at the numbers and we're all excited. Like, yeah, yeah. we're in May and June and we get a call from the CEO and never forget it was July 5th because it was right after, you know, 4th of July. And I was like kind of coming out of everything like, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> and um, yeah. I get a call and he's like, you know, all those numbers are great that you guys have been sending over, but we're not getting any sales. And I go, okay. I go, look, I'm like, but let me just pull this up. I'm like, look at all the click to calls. From a, it's a serve, it's a consulting thing, right? It's an mm -hmm. IT consulting thing. And I'm like, look at all these calls. And they're like, oh, well, we don't have anybody answering that phone. Oh <laughs> my God. How many times have I heard that? Oh my God. It's like, oh my God. I feel like sometimes you feel like no one else goes through this, Marty. I mean, like, I like it's the worst. <laughs> right. So oh. I'm sitting there and I go, I, I go, John, I'm like, um, 
what do you mean no one's answering the phone? And I was like, the whole reason in January, what we wanted to set this up was you didn't think email marketing was going to work. You didn't think webinars were going to work. You wanted the phone to ring. So we said, okay, well, we can start this off, but we're going to have to go to the other side eventually here because that'll only last for so much. So we can only create so much urgency with what you offer. And I'm like, so we created the urgency. We have people calling and I'm like, I'm like Googling the numbers because you can see it on the program. Like, yeah. here's who called. Yeah. And I'm like, you missed a call from X, Y, Z. They're like, no, they didn't call us. And I'm like, here, I'm like, here's the screenshot, right? <laughs> and I'm saying like, all this is working. So like, that's the front end side of the numbers. And to me, it's like tying that piece together. An agency can do that because a lot of times people don't see all that. Like they only hear one thing and they have an in-house marketer. And they're not necessarily tied to results. They have a job. I'm not knocking them by any stretch of, of the imagination, not, yeah, but they also have to prepare for an event or nowadays virtual events. They're also worried about the branding. And then they also have to do something with a, a print piece or they have to do something else that's a little bit more elaborate. Or sometimes in marketing, they're responsible for the overall feel of the office and other mm -hmm. things that are going on. Yeah. So they have all this on their plate. And to look at little metrics that are really sales related, an agency can help tie those things together. Absolutely. And that's really, and over the 10 years that we've run in Bad Rhino and 18 years of me doing this, you know, at first it was just a side hustle. Like, hey, I'm spending time after work to do this. I better start to see a return. So I have to get good at the numbers. Yep. Then running an agency, you have to know those numbers. And to me, being able to present those numbers and having a valid argument for them. But yeah, I didn't design your website or I didn't do this or you're not picking up the phone. Like I can't complete the sale for you either. And it's, and it's so funny because uh, going back to one of the things that you say, it like sales and marketing teams living on an island and not communicating with communicate, communicating. What the hell was that? Wrong syllable, <laughs> but like uh, it not really communicating with each other the right way. Um, I was a consultant for this one um, large uh, medical firm and I was just acting as a consultant and I was looking at all of their marketing numbers and they were talking to me like a typical marketer would talk to an, uh, some, anybody. Well, look at my numbers, look at my reports, look at what I'm doing, look at all these actions I'm getting, look at all these things. What they were doing was they were miscategorizing things as leads. Any, anytime anybody went to a blog and clicked on a link, they were right. calling them a lead. It's just like mm -hmm. that. I said, don't give me your, like, your HubSpot Stockholm syndrome. Like I'm not <laughs> into that. And, uh, but then I was talking to the salespeople and they were like, I'm calling all these people from the clicking the, these links and they're calling leads and they're not, it's so the, they were categorizing things incorrectly. Yeah. And then I've so, spoken to other companies where, oh, oh, um, I don't even know if that email address works anymore. I don't know if that phone number is still in play. I said, my God, do you know how much money you're spending with me? And I, I mean, I, just to tell you, like, I, I, because that's exactly what an agency does. And it's kind of like you're, you're the, the sales master, the marketing master, the psychologist, the, um, there's lots of different elements into how we tie everything together. And it really is useful because I, I think that thinking through the whole, and this is one of the things that I've, I, I learned over time is I need to see how this whole thing works. Like before yeah. we even start, I, I know that I know how to do my part, but we need to see how it's going to go straight through the finish and how you're, how you're going to be measuring results, because then you're going to feel like how many other clients, how many, I mean, come on, how many people have come to you that they've been screwed over by another agency and, and ha have they been screwed over right. or did they just need someone in a new outfit, someone with a new <laughs> voice, <laughs> you know, some, someone else to beat up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what it comes down to is like, that's one of my big red flags. Like when somebody does call, I'm flattered and I'm like, that's mm -hmm. great. And I'm like, well, talk to me about how you were screwed over or where they didn't deliver. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the longer you do it, the, the more you learn about how to ask those questions the right way. Yeah. And that's why I was saying like that part two is where that sales and marketing piece can come together. And that's where an agency can help if mm -hmm you have everything else out in the right direction. Sorry to cut you off there, but no, 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 I, I no, really no. think that's like perfect the way to, to, to analyze that. Like you said, is like, you know, pulling all those things together and understanding that. Mm -hmm. And did you, were you screwed over or did you not have everything in line? Because even as a marketing agency, when I look at things as leads that come in and sales are coming in, when I track like where everything was for whether it's myself or my business partner or other account managers, I'm like, do you know where that really came from? 
And we have to understand where that lead came from. So always ask the question and it's different, you know, for everybody. And you want to make sure that they were nurtured the right way because you don't want to start off on the wrong foot with anybody. And then if they did bring up, they were screwed over. I've had some that were legitimately screwed over. And then I've had others where it was sure. like, as soon as we did the discovery part, we're like, whoa, now I know why the other agency ran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the whole back end of their websites built like a game of Jenga. Um, exactly. Like a half played game of Jenga. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting uh, because I think that in order to be as successful as an agency owner, you have to be really interested at problem solving and really mm -hmm. like solving puzzles because um, every client presents itself as a puzzle. And as much as everyone feels that they aren't, and it's like, oh, we'll just go to the specialist. It's not like we're not fixing an engine. Like this is, this is not, this is not, there's, there's no true. manual for this. Um, what we're doing is looking at all the pieces of your car and figuring out how to do this. Um, but let's move, let's go, let's move into ad, like ads and ad strategies. Sure. So why, why do you need paid and organic strategies for digital and your, yeah. in, from your perspective? So I think um, you hit on this a little bit earlier, actually, in some of the conversation. Um, and I think it, it's really interesting. Like you said, you have to look alive, right? And I think that to me is like almost a, yeah. the, the term of organic, right? You know, it's earthy, yeah. it's real, it's got everything there. And you need some of that, right? Mm -hmm. Because your paid ads should pull people into wherever you want them to come to, right? So whether that's a webinar, whether that's going out to your... Um, social media channels or to a video that you were speaking on or a piece of another piece of content. So you want that to pull, pull them in, but when they get there, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily want to see like, Oh, this is the bad rhino show and they're going to sell, 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 whatever it is. Right. They want to see, Oh, Oh, that's Marty's talking about whatever, or Rich is talking about this, or Chris is talking about this. And they give, it's a feel to it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so you have to put out content that's just going to be out there, right? And mm -hmm. that to me is the supplemental stuff, but it's also priority stuff as well. Like you need a content plan. Everybody does. Just, Absolutely. I mean, just about every business needs some sort of content plan. Um, some people and some companies need to post daily. They need to be on Instagram every day. They need to be on Facebook six times a week. They have to have 20 tweets going out there. They have their Snapchat going, they have TikTok, they have LinkedIn posts. They have a, mm -hmm. uh, something going out on YouTube, you know, a couple of times a week. What you need to do is come up with a content plan, um, repurpose it, and you can do a bunch of stuff like that. But the organic side should show what you do, show your products without mm -hmm. talking to them about like, hey, buy now, buy now, buy now. And your first initial ads at top of funnel should just be like, hey, come check us out, you know, and get mm -hmm. the awareness out there and have the brand awareness out there so that when they do click on the website and then they leave, then you can retarget them with that page strategy that has a, a whole wide variety of things that look organic, but they're also educating the buyer, putting them through a process of educating, hopefully getting them back to a site or to download right. another piece of content mm -hmm. or, you know, click on the website to a different page and get them into a, a buying cycle. Like we are using the car example of 900, right? Um, people always say, and clients say, well, I don't want them to come in and then just be bombarded with messaging. I'm like, well, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that, but then you need to bombard them in some sort of way. And it should be a mix, in my opinion, should be a mix of organic and that page strategy where the page just tapping on the shoulder and say, oh, I saw you were looking at, you know, this type of hat. Mm -hmm we sell that type of hat, come on over here. And then they come in there and they see a, an interesting video about how the hat was constructed or what type of hat and how the story of the company started. And that's mm -hmm. just the feel of it. And they're like, Hey, I, I trust this person. And they might come back to it. And that's where the paid kicks back in because they're not making that decision. Like the car, 900 pieces of content before they make a decision right. on average. And that's from Google. That's not just somebody making it up. Like that's from Google, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's you know what they're using to base their ad rates on. But when you have a good mix and it does take time to do that, that's why I think people get frustrated where they're like, well, I'll just turn ads on. I can see this information come fast. But what I've always found, if you don't have the mix, the ads not only go up in price on social because not to get too technical about it, but they want you to interact with the audience. They don't want you to just 
constantly sell, yes. sell, sell, pitch ads. So your organic is part of your ad strategy to, to begin with, mm -hmm. but you do need to educate buyers more so than you ever have before. And actually I would say oh, we're always leaning this way, but it was starting to really trend that way um, towards the beginning of 2019. And then obviously with this whole year, the way everything's situated in 2020, man, do you, people have time. They go, well, I like this t-shirt and it's the exact same blend of this one over here, but I'm going to search for a third just to get more information. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> right? It's all the same price. It's all the same color. They're the same t-shirt from wherever, but they have time. Right. Mm -hmm. And when people have time like that, they search a little bit differently. So when they go in and they see the funny video, and I'm not saying you have to be funny, but it's just, it, it connects with somebody, mm -hmm. but it may not connect with somebody else and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But that will help foster that community, help foster more repeat buyers and everything else in that process. So you have to have the mix of both. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And I think one of the things that you said that is that really resonated with me was that get them in the door, get them to touch base. And then once they touch base, you can then be a little bit more aggressive if you want to, yeah. but be very, very, you don't have to be aggressive to start off with. And I think one of the, that's a, that's a big thing that I kind of have to talk with clients a lot about, um, unless they, unless their, 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 their message or their business is suited to that really aggressive type approach. Like if it's a personal injury attorney, there are certain types of things that really do work well with that kind of like you, you go, um, and the pointing and the gesturing, but, um, one thing that I feel is always, uh, uh, it's, it's misunderstood is that what marketing's definition is versus what sales definition is. And when we say social media marketing, I think I'll have clients that will, I will put together the first content calendar for them and we'll show them. And they will say, uh, the, why, why would I say this? Why would I say this? Why would I say? Because you're trying to draw people near to you. You're trying to, you're trying to educate them, entertain them and inform them and then sell to them. So you can have a marketing mix in your, in your messaging. It's not 40% off, well, here, click here, click here to the website, click here to the website. It, it's, not, it, it's not at all advertising, it's marketing. And see, marketing leads to sales. Advertising helps marketing get closer to sales faster. It, it's like, these are all things. And this is one of the things where, um, like it, it, it was just crazy. When I started um, talking to different medical firms, because in Florida, I mean, it's like, there's tons of medical firms down here and they would, or a lot of them would say, um, I would be talk, talking to somebody with a really weird title. And I'm like, why am I talking to you about this? And like, um, well, I'm the person that's in charge of this. And then, and then we have like 14 different marketers working for us. And I'm just like, what do the marketers do? They're like, oh, well, they go into different clinics and they give, they give speeches and they go and they knock on doors and you know, you know what they do. They just drop off free stuff. And I'm like, it's a salesperson. I just want to just let you know it's a salesperson. Um, and I, I, they're like, oh, well, no, they're marketing. And it's like, oh my gosh, not really. <laughs> it's like, we're the ones that wind up the message to set them off. And we do all of the research. We set up the game. We set up the play. We, we kind of, mm -hmm. you're supposed to, the marketing team is supposed to listen to what the sales, I would say that from an agency perspective, what I do is I find every lazy point of a salesperson and try to find an easy way around it or how I can give Perfect. them, how I can incentivize them to actually execute that when I get them that result. Because we've had people before where you were talking about that phone, like the phone calls. Um, we were getting, um, we had this Facebook lead form for this one franchise that we were working with in like 15 different locations. They were getting email signups with, uh, with like one of the most relevant target audiences. It took us like three hours to build it. And we tested it, it worked beautifully. They were getting two cents an email sign up with an in uh, with like a, a lead form on a Facebook. So obviously marketer to marketer, big win for us. They said the the salespeople said that they weren't good emails and they were all bouncing. And I said, Oh, really? Oh, you're probably right. Let's secret shop this. <laughs> we secret shopped them and found out that that was a problem, and then we presented it. But it's kind of one of those things where if we know that the salespeople are not going to do that, what we suggested to them was, 
why don't we feed these into an automated email system that you can then deliver? We'll do, we'll do one nice little intro email with the personalized person's name. And then we'll say, we'll be sending you more information. My colleagues will be sending you more information in a few days and then put them on like a six email drip after that. And then um, they were like, oh, okay. I said, see, then your salespeople don't have to worry about anything. They don't have to work that hard. They could just do nothing. I mean, not that I'm biased. It's so true. It's exactly <laughs> true. I, and speaking, okay, here, does email still work? Yes. 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 I mean, so like you take your favorite store and I always use Dick Sporting Goods as an example. And the reason is, <clears throat> is I play a lot of golf. I work in the golf industry for their agency and okay. I play a lot of golf too, right? The only thing that relaxes my brain good enough, I get out there, I forget about everything. So I shop at Dick's Sporting Goods and their Golf Galaxy is part of the whole thing. Anyway, I always say like when people ask the email work and I'm like, well, Golf Galaxy knows the exact beginning of golf season. They seem to know exactly when I run out of anything that I might need. And they also seem to understand when I might want a new shirt because I'm tired of wearing the same six, 10 shirts that I have and they have a sale. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't think that's by accident. And they email with those specific sales at very coordinated times of the year, which is outstanding. They hit me with a mailer, but more importantly with their email is that they're constantly there and they have a couple of advanced programs as a marketer. I can tell that, you know, there's definitely, if I go to the website, I almost instantaneously get an email. So they have some more advanced stuff, but on, in a general thing is they hit me five to seven times a week, more so in the golf season, a little less. So I always say like, as a large company as Dick Sporting Goods is putting those things out there seven days a week, do you think that you might want to email two or three times? Oh, I don't want to bother my, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> two or three times a week, maybe, you know, I don't want to bother anybody. I'm like, do you know what most people do with their emails? If they like you or they purchase from you before, they usually just go, oh yeah, I don't need to read that because I'm not really need that. They yeah. delete it. And then next thing you know, next week they're like, oh yeah, you know what? That sale's perfect because I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little reminder. I find people opt out and this is just recent. I find people opt out more of text messaging now than they do on emails because they see their email as almost like their old mailbox where mm -hmm. I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah, totally. Text message is total interrupt, which works for certain things. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen, um, we do a lot of work in craft beer. Text messaging was a lifesaver during the pandemic. But I'm also hearing different stories. Like if you text too much, they'll, they'll leave right away. But if you email, as you can email almost as much as you want almost daily and they never leave if they like your brand they like and they buy from you so it's pretty fascinating so yes it still works you can do so many things with email um, going back to your organic and paid strategy question and if you have retargeting wrapped in there it's beautiful because if you send an email to your core list they click on a certain piece of content and they're retargeted around the web, or you can send them directly to Facebook or Instagram. They check that out. They can also be retargeted through there. And it's a beautiful thing. And I think a couple of things that you brought up that I think I want to highlight the last one that you said um, that if you're building this, like the value of an email list, which a value of the email list that you've earned is obviously like way greater than one that you rent or purchase. Um, Absolutely. But at the same time, there is worth to that too. But with the, with the email list that you have, if you are going to send out a special offer and, you've and they go to a page and then it retargets them to that special offer, you're going to be giving them, a, you're putting them into a different funnel that you're going to sell them to. Yeah. So it's not, it, but what a lot of people think is that, oh, it's just going to be just, I'm going to send them to my sales page. It's like, hey, what's up? Buy this, <laughs> buy this golf club. It's like, no, it's golf season. <laughs> Get, here, here's like the 10 tips that you need to know about keeping cool this season. And then you go there, there's the clubs, you can opt into something or you're just picked up by the pixel, you're retargeted on Facebook. I mean, yeah. this is how it works. It's more sophisticated than just sending out blasts. But the second yeah. thing is, I feel in my, my experience, the less emails that you do, the higher the opt out because they forget about you and then forget you come out of the you. blue and they're like, who the hell is this? Bye. Exactly. And the opt outs are really high. And I think having a cadence that's regular and consistent. Now I think consistent, I, I really don't like doing less than one, one a week or suggesting one a week. Um, but 
Making sure that all of the rest of your website is tied up correctly to automation, I think is really important, especially if you're shopping. I've mm-hmm. talked, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, um, I, they were talking about their shopping cart or something. And I said, I was like, I'm not dealing with your emails. I said, because you have another big agency doing it. I don't want to get, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. Um, but what is your abandoned cart sequence look like? I'm just, I'm just curious because I want to incorporate, I wanted to incorporate some of that abandoned cart messaging into some of the social media ad stuff that we were doing and retargeting. And they were like, oh no, we don't have that. I screamed like a three-year-old girl. And then I said, like, I can't believe that you're not doing that. And they said, well, well, why? And I was like, you're just dumping water into a pail with no hole in it. And like with a big hole in the bottom. It's like, it's what a waste. That's so wasteful. We... So I'm just going to say it because I feel it's like perfect and everybody should do this because if you're listening to this and you have an e-commerce store that's new or even existing, one of the things that I got giddy about, I didn't scream like a three-year-old girl. I just got giddy like a three-year-old girl when we, <laughs> we signed on a new client and there's a lot of other stuff. And then they're like, Hey, by the way, um, can we do this as a project? We want you to re revitalize our email and all this yeah. and I looked and me and my CMO looked at it and he's like oh man I'm like you see what I see and I go yep and I'm like he's like look at the abandoned cart so we turned that on day day three and they were like we haven't even started our ads and we're getting like all these new sales and like we're like yeah it's just starting like the whole abandoned cart reminding them and all this and they're like oh my gosh and then a step further so they were only emailing their previous customers. They had another 300,000 people on a list that they weren't using. Oh my God. Exactly. So we sent out and said, Hey, we just wanted to let you know, you downloaded a piece of content. If you want to stay on our list. And by the way, we're having a sale. Now what they sell is extremely a niche market. Okay. And we said, we'll just make an offer to them. And we did. And it was like one weekend, they did like 110,000 in sales Shit, just off the amazing. email. It's like one email. Wow. And they were like, how are we doing this? I'm like, well, you asked us to do this. And so anyway, that abandoned cart, if you're listening to this and you have an e-com store and you don't have an abandoned cart, I don't care whether you're making one sale a week, 20 sales uh, a second or whatever it is, get that fixed because that can be the quickest way to kind of solving some of your, your issues really fast because people forget. They're like, uh, I don't, should I spend a hundred dollars? Should I wait till payday? Should I wait till next month? All right. I'm just going to, nah, no. And then you come back and even sometimes I've seen quick abandoned card offers where they're like, Hey, come back because we're going to have this special coming up and you can reconfigure depending on what systems you're in. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've seen it work like oh, awesome. Like it works so well. It is. I completely agree with you. I think that one of the, it, it really, it, I think what happens with a lot of pushback on the abandoned cart thing is the next thing they start, they start mixing up concepts. I think sometimes mm-hmm. people do. And I mean, this is totally fine because they're not in it like we are, but um, it's like, well, I don't know what my pixel event is and I have an event <laughs> and there's an event over here and then I'm going to abandon this and then I'm going to automate this and I don't have email. And it's, it's like, well, calm down Hold on. <laughs> i mean it's like we, we can we can figure this out it's just look at one thing look at the one thing that you can fix fast and if you can't fix it talk to an agency and say hey i just need an abandoned cart sequence built how does that co- how much is that going to cost me and just mm-hmm. have someone do it for you i mean yep. it's a tune-up it's a tune-up it's not going to be a whole different website build unless you don't have an email marketing program but still can if that if that's the case then you know we have more issues that we need to discuss at this table over here but uh but but yeah i think email is power let's talk about one thing in email i mean we're running a little long but with with cold lists and renting lists how with clients i find a lot of people have questions about why should i be buying purchasing this list even if it's targeted um, mm-hmm. I, I've heard that they have a high bounce rate and I can't put them into my constant contact. Don't put them in my constant contact. Right. How do you easily answer someone that is really worried about this and they mm-hmm. stop doing it, which could really benefit them? Because I think a lot of people throw it out. Like affiliate yeah. marketing is another thing. People just kind of put That's to the side because they're scared of it. And mm-hmm. I think people are scared of this. What do you say to clients to kind of get them kind of comfortable with it? Yeah, it. 
so I don't want to get too technical. There's a couple of different ways, but keep it like high level. Like one thing that I'll say, you can take that through a third party and have them send on your behalf. Like um, interior designers, they have like these hubs of like people that like maybe very specific, like they like <clears throat> stuff out West or Southwest or anything. And they will send like in a magazine format and then you're kind of like placed in there. Right. So that's one way you can rent a list, right? Where you're just kind of buying advertising on their list. That's a like a bridge to a piece. When you go out and you buy a list, um, going back to golf, is we had a, a client not all that long ago. He had a 400,000 person list that he bought, and they were all buyers in some way, shape, or form. So what we did was before he was like, well, we could just upload an email. I'm like, whoa, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> so then you have to go through a step process with there. And there's a couple of things that you want to be cautious of. You don't know where that list came from, right? So you do want to be cautious with that. And I always say, put it in a separate thing. There's tools out there. You can do research. It's not spamming. You're doing this above board. These emails are out there as long as you get them from a reputable source and you, you're, you know who you're dealing with. But you also want to run it through so that your domain, if if that happens to go bad, um, you're sending them to a domain that you own that's close to yours or similar that's sending them to an offer that's through you. But you just want to be cautious of some of those little things. Mm -hmm. But I have also will say I've seen things grow so fast, much faster when it's a really good list. And also, too, mm -hmm. if you get a 400,000 person list, don't email everybody at once. Take it in <laughs> chunks. <laughs> Take 5,000, clean the list, so to speak, send it out. Yeah. Take another 5,000. Hey, those are pretty good. You know, we did one. Um, just think about this, a change in business. They bought 1 million buyers list. Wow. And they got the first email got like 35% open. Wow. Um, and then across the whole thing, they then just push them through to opt in down the road through a sequence to get them onto their own. And I think they wind up getting over a third of them. And then they also, out of the, the old list that they use, they hit that up every once in a while and it generates more activity. And then they have a whole other retargeting thing. That's great. But I'm going to tell you this because I just dropped like a little bit of information without some depth talk to somebody that knows what they're doing before you do this. This is not something that you want to do on your own um, by buying a list and then pushing this information out there because of all those concerns you do have. Those are legitimate and yep. you do want to be cautious with that, but you need to have somebody know what they're doing. And if you go that route, you know, there's tons of things that you can do. And, and uh, just on that point too, it, this costs money. So yes. when you're when you're when you're going to talk to an agency, just understand that um, they're they're going to have to formulate the strategy for you. They're going to have to cultivate the list. They're going to they're going to vet the broker for you. They're going to find the they're going to get all of the sequence ready on the right the right software or whatever that's proprietary or whatever. Um, there's 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 a lot of pieces to this. So it's not hitting send. So if you're going into like talking about an email saying, well, I just have to hit send. It's like. Well, what, what, what are you, you're, you're rubbing a lamp and the, the content's popping up on there. I mean, who's, where are the people? So it's, uh, it, it does cost money to email. And I think that people, just because they're doing it all day long and for doing it for free, it, it, it's not free when someone's cultivating your strategy and really trying to create sales for you. Um, just like think about, I mean, texting isn't free, using your phone isn't free. There's, there's service charges that, that apply. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, if you need a technician to come in to fix something, you might have to have a house call. So this is kind of what what um, we're doing at the agency level. Uh, Marty, is there anything else? Is there anything that you want to plug or anything that's coming up that that people should be looking out for or how they can find you, connect with you? Yeah, um, no, nothing to plug. I'm, I'm starting a, a mini uh, mastermind that if you go to badrhinoinc.com, you'll see that in a couple of weeks. Um, that'll come out or if you see, you'll see it on our Facebook page as well. Um, it's just to help people out during this crazy time. I mean, the last nine months have been an upheaval on a variety of different levels. And what we're seeing is people just need some guidance. And we decided to start this and get some information out there, just like we're talking about today, yeah. to help people make that decision. They might ultimately have to hire somebody, us or somebody else. But what we've been finding is there's just been tons of stuff where people are coming to us and we're like, all right, we have to do this in mass. 
and kind of get that kind of together. Outside of that, you know, you can find us at badrhinoinc.com. If you just search Bad Rhino and digital marketing, you know, we're kind of all over the place. And, you know, if you have any questions, um, send it, you know, from this specifically. Um, just put, you know, the name of the podcast in the subject and put it and send an email to info at badrhinoinc.com. One of us here will get to it. it might not be immediately, but it'll be in a day or two. And uh, we'll at least definitely try and answer your question the best we can. We'll do that for every podcast interview I'm on. Yeah. And also for everyone that uh, that is listening and are watching, um, we have all of the details in um, the description of the show. So all the hyperlinks on how you can connect with Marty and Bad Reiner are going to be in there as well as link to his book on Amazon. Um, so you will be able to connect and please do. Um, uh, well, Marty, I've really enjoyed uh, being able to like chat through and I mean, commiserate slightly in times <laughs> about uh, the wonderful world of uh, agencies and social media and email. Um, I uh, thank you so much for being a guest on today's show. Um, thank folks, you. Uh, it was great. The uh, Social Marketing Academy is going to be coming up with another show pretty soon. Um, if you have any questions, um, I mean, look at what we covered today. This is like a free consultation, people. And this is kind of like we're lifting the curtain a little bit. So I think you're kind of getting some value, right? Yeah, you're agreeing. So what I'm going to say is go to gosalesandmarketing.com, click on any of the links, any of the links that are on that page and send a message of any question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode. Um, we're going to have lots of really great experts coming up. We have some, uh, we have an influencer marketing firm that's going to be coming up in a few weeks, um, geo targeting and a few other people that are just going to shed another uh, just view on the whole marketing, digital marketing world. So until next time, it's been Christopher Tompkins with the Social Marketing Academy, and I will see you folks on the next episode. Okay, take care. <laughs>